this video, we're talking about how to use power rule to find the derivative of a power function. And in this particular problem, we're going to be doing four different functions. We're going to be finding the derivative of four different functions. And you'll also hear these functions called linear combinations. And the reason is because we have this constant coefficient out in front of some function in terms of x. So in other words, we have a constant coefficient multiplied by some function in terms of x, f of x. And all of these functions follow that type of format. But whatever we call it, in order to use power rule to take the derivative, what we recognize is a constant coefficient value a out in front of our power function. And then the power function, in other words, a function raised to some power, a function that has an exponent, with a base of x and an exponent of n. When we want to take the derivative of a function in that format, what we do is we leave the constant coefficient a out in front. See, this a is left out in front here. And we bring the n, the exponent, down in front and multiply it by a. So we end up with a n out in front. And then we leave x as it is, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent. So instead of n, we end up with n minus 1. So let's take a look at what that looks like for this particular function here. So in this case, we identify that we have a constant coefficient of 5 and an exponent of 4. Well, that exponent of 4 is going to need to come down in front and get multiplied by the 5. So we're going to end up with 5 times 4, and then we're going to have x to the 4 minus 1 according to our formula because we're going to subtract 1 from the exponent. So then when we simplify here, we get 20x to the 3rd, and 20x to the 3rd is the derivative of 5x to the 4th. Now in this case, we have negative 6x and we want to find the derivative. Well, how do we use power rule to find this derivative if we don't have an exponent? Well, what we need to realize is that this x variable here is actually x to the first power, so we can still use power rule to find the derivative. We just bring this exponent out in front to multiply it by the negative 6, and we get negative 6 times 1, and then we have x to the original exponent 1, but then we subtract 1 according to this formula. So when we simplify, we get negative 6 x to the 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, and anything raised to the power of 0 is 1, so we end up with negative 6 times 1, which is just negative 6, and negative 6 is the derivative of negative 6x. And as a shortcut here, what we realize is that whenever we have a constant coefficient, whether it's positive or negative, but we have this constant coefficient multiplied by x to the first, or just x, the derivative is always just going to be the constant coefficient. The x drops away, and the derivative is whatever the coefficient is. So as we get comfortable with this process, we don't have to go through all these steps every time. We can just say the derivative of negative 6x is obviously negative 6. In the same way, if we want to talk about finding the derivative of 3, you might say, how would we use power rule to find the derivative of 3? There's no x variable involved. But what we need to remember is that 3 is the same thing as 3 times x to the 0, because x to the 0 is 1, so this would be 3 times 1, or just 3. So multiplying 3 by x to the 0 doesn't add anything to the value of 3. This whole thing is just 3. So when we have a constant, we think about it as the constant times x to the 0 power, and then we can apply power rule. So we bring the 0 down in front, and we have 3 times 0 times x to the 0 minus 1. Well, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 times x to the negative 1 is still 0. Anything multiplied by 0 is 0. So the answer then is 0, which tells us that we don't have to go through these steps every time. Whenever we just have a constant here, and we want to find the derivative of a constant, the derivative of a constant is always 0, in the same way that the derivative of some constant coefficient multiplied by x is just that constant coefficient. So in the future, when you see a constant, like 3 or 7 or square root of 2, the derivative is just going to be 0, in the same way that the derivative of negative 6x is just going to be negative 6. Looking here at our third example, we're going to have 90 times 100, when we bring the 100 exponent down in front, times x to the 100 minus 1. Well, 90 times 100 is going to be 9,000, so we end up with 9,000 x to the 99, and this is the derivative of 90 x to the 100. So now what do we do when we have a polynomial function, which is the sum of all three of these terms? Well, when we take the derivative of a function that involves multiple terms, and it's just the sum or the difference of multiple terms, so we have addition and subtraction in between our terms, and this is just a simple polynomial, each term is just a power function, we can just take the derivative of each term individually. So the derivative then of this whole combination, we just take one term at a time, and we say the derivative of 5x to the 4 is 20x cubed, so we get 20x 
cubed. The derivative of negative 6x is negative 6. We get negative 6. And the derivative of 90x to the 100 is 9,000 x to the 99, and so we say the derivative of this entire combination is just the sum of all of the derivatives of each of the individual terms. And that's how you use power rule to find the derivative of a function.